I think of two events in which there was a tremendous outcry internationally around something that could be identified as the fear of Holocaust, and one of them is an obvious one, the Three Mile Island accident. I was in Europe at the time and had enormous reverberations all through Europe. Some say these have been covered over, but not entirely covered over in people's psyches. The other was the showing of the film Holocaust, the television film, a couple of years ago, all through the world in many countries. Um, the out pouring of emotion around that was overwhelming and absolutely surprising. Nobody predicted it. I was in Germany at the time uh, where it had that enormous effect there. Now, for many reasons and many different kinds of feelings, it's third in different countries, but I think both events tapped what I would call a reservoir of feelings around the danger of Holocaust. And these come from nuclear weapons, but also from other sources of possible genocidal behavior or destruction of the environment or destruction of the ozone layer or the possibility of the drying up of resources of food or energy, all contributing to what I think of as imagery of extinction. All this causes a breakdown in the kind of equilibrium of social or collective numbing that we develop in our culture and other cultures too. People become more anxious, as we've both been agreeing, then what happens? What does one do with that beginning anxiety or tension? And here I think the great need is to have a shift from fragmentary awareness, the very beginnings of awareness, to something more like formed awareness, which would take the shape of a general policy, a position, attitudes, a point of view, a worldview that included nuclear dangers very centrally, and some ways of overcoming these dangers. It's the more difficult stage, but it's the step we need. Yes, if I can just add a word to that, it seems to me that we've come to a point in uh, world history where uh, a survival-oriented national leadership is absolutely essential. That is, we are not electing leaders that are attuned to these kinds of issues, that even really uh, deal with them in a serious way, and yet, in some objective sense, if one sent down a management consultant from outer space, uh, he would be telling, so obviously, uh, the large societies in the world that they should be worrying about energy, re sharing of resources, food and oil, uh, protection of the environment, uh, administration of the oceans, all these things that require that kind of uh, global perspective. And so we're trying to operate with obsolete institutions. And one of the things that happens when you try to operate with obsolete institutions that can't deal with the genuine challenges is that they close off the channels that try to expose their impotence. And that's what we're seeing in, Demo in American society with the uh, atrophy, the atrophying of our most uh, precious democratic procedures, where Congress is no help, where the courts are no help, where elections are no help, and the issues have to be raised by unconventional means, by extra-legal means, by symbolic violations of the law. And what the Berrigans represent to me is a very clear symbolic acknowledgement and demonstration that for democracy to function on behalf of the citizenry, we can't just rely on business as usual and write letters to congressmen and do things of that sort. We need to engage ourselves in a more serious way if we believe our own analysis. Is it that the institutions are obsolete, or that those who make the institutions learn are obsolete? Well, of course, it's that the institutions reflect a structure of power in American society. They are captive to a point of view and to a set of interests that are locked into an obsolete way of relating to the rest of the world. The image of the management <coughs> consultant from outer space that Richard just mentioned may be worth pursuing a little further, because a management consultant in this sense, and especially from outer space, is sort of outside the given um, structure, the given institutions, the given set of assumptions. In a way, anybody who really in a truly radical, that is fundamental way, looks at nuclear weapons and what they entail, what they threaten, and what is necessary to really cope with them, is something of that management consultant from out of space. And the Plowshares 8 in this act are trying to say that um, 
the immediate laws of Montgomery County uh, don't provide for that to happen to us, or it's likely to happen to us and to virtually everybody else in the world if we don't stop and take stock. So they're perceived as somebody who's coming from out from the outside, from outer space, if you will, and people don't want to hear the diagnosis of the management consultant. Uh, but there are those who say that the laws of Montgomery County are adequate to take care of this situation. That the reason you were called out to testify today was to tell the court Montgomery County, Pennsylvania law permits a defense of justification. Well, the justification is based upon international law in, in this regard. But it was in the hands of the judge. Yes, the judge all right. refused to permit you to testify. Well, then it's a kind of equilibrium between the institutions and the individuals. And the institutions. It's difficult to pull the institutions into the more international, universalistic dimension because their function overall by tradition tends to be more narrow. You would have to interpret them, I think, in a much freer, wider, more innovative way to bend them into a more universalistic position. With Mooney, perhaps you could, but there'd still have to be some fundamental change of heart and of what you might say cosmology of worldview to be able to do that much. It's not so easy. And that, of and course, is what the Barricades are trying to do. What they're trying desperately to do, and what all of us should be trying to do. There's one, there's one thing about this idea of sort of thinking of the Barricades as sort of enacting the view from outer space within our political space uh, that I want to add, in, and that is that it also uh, joins with the most uh, strongly felt uh, imperatives of inner yeah. well, uh, the, the uh, religious uh, background and orientation uh, of the defendants in this case I think is terribly important to their uh, actions and to understanding their motivation because I think that part of what they're saying to us all is that if you take Christianity seriously as a perspective uh, in which to uh, understand what the meaning of life is about, uh, then one has to uh, disengage in some very dramatic way from this fundamental drift toward uh, nuclear destruction and the failure of the churches to really uh, take part in some way in bringing a Christian witness, so to speak, uh, to bear in relation to what is happening is part of the necessity, again, for them to act as uh, individuals. They don't have uh, the support of the church in, in any kind of formal sense as a <coughs> basis to vindicate what they are alleging to be is the real message of uh, religious reality dilemma of institutions is reflected in them also because much of the impetus for Plowshares 8 comes from the Catholic left and represented in them are people who have stayed in the church and people who have left the church. There, It can be done either way and there's a way of doing it either way and uh, some would prefer to make use of the, one of the oldest of our institutions, which has a radical potential, uh, as certainly Dan Barrican demonstrates uh, every day, and others had the need, like his brother Phil, to leave the church, perhaps partly for personal reasons, but out of some sense of the institution failing him and his needs. And I think we have to maintain the model of inside and outside of those institutions, but the common thread being the spirituality and the commitment to a future uh, to something beyond the moment, and that's where the spirituality lies, the commitment to issues beyond the self, beyond the moment, uh, really uh, into the future. Thanks very much. Thank you.